In episode four, Bo-Katan, Din Djarin, and the rest of the Mandalorians continue to train, and that is going to include Grogu. Din Djarin wants Grogu to become a Mandalorian, and that means doing all of the training. He matches him up against one of the foundlings, a.k.a. a child, and the foundling thinks it's a joke. He's judging a book by its cover. He doesn't think that Grogu is at his level, but he finds out pretty quickly that Grogu has skills. This foundling walks away to think about the fact that he looked over his opponent when he's suddenly taken by a raptor. The Mandalorians try to catch up to this raptor using their jetpacks, but they have to err on a side of caution because if they fire at it, they're worried that the raptor will kill the foundling. This kind of thing has happened before. Bo-Katan hopped in her ship and followed it, finding out where the raptor's lair was. When she gets back to the Mandalorian settlement, she lets them know that she knows where the raptor is located, and she wants to form a team to go get the child. Din Djarin's in, as is the child's father, and a few others. They all board in a Bo's ship and head on over there. They're planning on parking the ship and then walking the rest of the distance and climbing up a mountain to locate the child and hopefully find out that he's still alive. While they do that, Grogu stays with the armorer. Din Djarin isn't the only one who's in favor of Grogu becoming a Mandalorian. So is the armorer, and she decides to make him a piece of armor that he can use as he trains to become a full-fledged Mandalorian. As she's making this piece, though, Spark starts to fly up, and it reminds Grogu of his previous life, the one he had before he met Din Djarin. He was in a city that looked an awful lot like Kurasan with a bunch of Jedis, but they were being attacked by the Empire. All the Jedis were trying to protect Grogu. It came down to one final Jedi who narrowly escaped the Empire as he fled with Grogu in tow. It was pretty scary for Grogu, but once the sparks stop flying and the armorer finishes the piece, he's thrilled. It's just another sign that he's been accepted into this group. Another person that's quickly been accepted is Bo-Katan. They're planning on going after the raptor and the child the next day, and they make camp. And Bo turns to Din Djarin and says, how do I eat? And he explains to her that once food is handed out, you go and find a place where no one's around, and you take your helmet off, and then you can eat. Bo starts to do that, but she's stopped and told that she can stay by the fire because she is the one that is leading this mission. This is the way. So she does that. And the next day, she leads this rescue mission. When they reach the top and they reach the raptor's nest, the raptor isn't there. They think this is great. Now all we have to do is find the foundling. And they see a heat signature, but they don't tread cautiously at all. The child's father in particular rushes to the heat signature only to find out that it isn't his child. It's three baby raptors. And that's when the adult raptor shows up with the child in its mouth because this raptor was planning on using the child as food for the kids. All of the Mandalorians, though, burst into action, chasing this raptor down, saving the child, and disabling its wing to the point where it falls in the water and it's eaten by a much larger creature. When they arrive back, they're heroes, because they did something that is really tough. They saved a foundling. Most of the time, these things are just lost causes. The armorer walks up to Bo-Katan and says, You have done the highest honor of the creed. You saved a foundling. And Bo-Katan nods and says, this is the way. But we also brought you three more foundlings in need of care and training. That's because they grabbed the baby raptors and brought them along. The armorer then notices that Bo is missing a piece of her armor. It flew off as they were trying to rescue the foundling. So she goes and makes her another one. She asks her what symbol she wants on this piece of armor. And Bo says, what about one with the mythosaur? The armorer says that's fine. She starts making it. And as she's doing so, Bo asks, what if I told you that I saw one? I actually saw a mythosaur. And the armor says, you're very lucky. It's a noble vision. But Bo says, no, I mean, I saw a real one. And that's because what she saw in the living waters of Mandalore, she's very certain that it was a mythosaur. But the armor just thinks that it's a vision and nothing more. And she doesn't really take her all that serious. But she does create her a badass piece of armor. That's cool. Thank you so much for checking out this recap. Please consider subscribing to the channel and subscribing to my Patreon. Hit thumbs up if you liked it. Smash that thumbs down button if you thought it sucked. If you left a comment, I don't get back to you. I usually don't check the comments unless they're like a super comment. Also, if you don't see the next video up on the end screen, not to worry. It'll be up in a day or two.